Our next speaker will be Masako Okano, Deputy Director General of the Railroad Bureau in the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism of Japan. Ms. Okano has continuously worked in the MLIT since 1993, where she has held crucial positions, including uh, as Director of the Urban Railway P Policy Division in the Railway Bureau and Director of the Policy Division in the Policy Bureau, before being appointed to her current position in July 2023. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Okano to the stage. Thank you very much for kind introduction. I'm very much grateful and uh, honored to be here today and give a presentation. And as a keynote speech, I would like to make a short uh, presentation in Japanese. Okay. Thank you very much once again. Thank you for inviting me. I am honored to speak at this offic official National Cherry Blossom Festival that symbolizes the friendship between Japan and the United States. I understand that the uh, United States plans to spend a large federal budget for the expansion of the rail network under the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and other laws. Against this background, the theme of today's symposium is very timely, and I am excited to be here. Japan provides itself on being a major railroad power in the world. Railroads have played an important role in economic development, as well as being an important social in infrastructure that supports people's lives as they commute to work and also to school. Rail also has excellent, excellent environmental performance and is expected to make a significant contribution to the realization of a sustainable society. However, the future of Japan's railroad is not necessarily rosy, and then the country is coming to a crossroad due to uh, uh, different uh, challenges that I'd like to share with you today. Today, uh, I'd like to share with you, and also this is the agenda, and, and also I'd like to start with an overview of Japan's railway network. There are three characteristics uh, that uh, illustrate uh, the uniqueness of it. First, private capital has led the development. Japan's rail system was built uh, and opened, uh, opened in 1872, which is 150 years ago after uh, Japan resumed exchange with foreign countries under the guidance of foreign engineers. As the country modernized, the rail system was rapidly developed along the way. The system was once nationalized, but the development continued with private capital as a principle. So oh, there are oh, 217 private railway companies. Second, Japan's network has high density of routes and a high percentage of use. Japan's landmass is approximately 380,000 uh, square kilometers, the size of equivalent size equivalent to Mo Montana, and then also 75 percent of the land is considered mountainous. And then with this. Uh, 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 with this uh, uh, environment, the rail network is uh, approximately uh, 28,000 kilometers. Uh, the route density per country's land mass is the highest among major countries, 6.5, uh, 8 times denser than the United States, 2.2 times um, denser than the United, uh, United Kingdom. When it comes to passenger kilometer, railway has the highest share of 30% among the major countries and is the familiar mode of transportation. Uh, third, railways offer high environmental advantages. Rail offers great environmental advantages to begin with, and then also high passenger kilometer creates much more greater uh, environmental benefits. And then you can see that uh, CO2 emissions per passenger kilometer with rail 17 grams, so that means that uh, one eighth of private vehicles and also one sixth of aviation. Next, I'd like to discuss the railway network developments in Japan, including Shinkansen and also urban routes. I'd like to start with uh, Shinkansen development. 
in 1964, the year of the、uh, Tokyo Olympics, the to Tokaido Shinkansen began service as a high speed rail connecting the two major cities of Tokyo and Osaka. Since then, the Shinkansen has been developed successively and now has 10 routes with a total length of 3,300 kilometers. And also, the total number of passengers is 11 billion from 1964 to 20,、uh, 2019. In addition, Uh, so, this Shinkansen is currently considered in Texas to be implemented, so, this is such great news to us. In addition, some routes are still under construction or scheduled for construction. The linear Chuo Shinkansen will connect Tokyo and Osaka, a distance of 550 kilometers, in 67 minutes at a speed of over 500 kilometers per hour. At this speed, you would be able to travel between Washington, D.C. and New York City in about 40 minutes. The Shinkansen is fast and services are very frequent. That means that、uh, urban areas throughout Japan are well connected. This has contributed to significant economic growth along the routes. This is an example of Hokuriku Shinkansen. The Tokyo Kanazawa service opened in 2015. The distance between these two cities is、uh, 454 kilometers. Before the Shinkansen、uh, technology was implemented, it took three hours and、uh, 47 minutes, but now two hours and、uh, 28 mi minutes, achieving time saving of 79 minutes. So, as a result, la the land value near Kanazawa Station increased by 17%, and also the region attracts more tourists, and also the economic effect is estimated at 454. Four million dollars. Moving on to Japan's urban railway networks. In urban、uh, areas, subways and also railway systems have been enhanced to reduce conge congestion and also improve speed and also increase airport access. And the length of lines have increased 1.7 fold to 2,420 kilometers in 55 years. In addition, since these、uh, services have been developed with capital, private capital, with several railroad、um, operators in each, each city, users have to transfer between the lines、uh, to use different operators. However, in order to、uh, solve this inconvenience, mutual direct service is provided so that a user can stay on the same line、uh, to go to different、uh, routes by operated by different companies. And、uh, with a density of urban rail lines of、uh, 3.84 kilometers,、uh, so Tokyo operates at a much higher density than Paris or New York, and it is an important and also convenient means of transportation for commuting、uh, to and also from work and school. As I mentioned, Japan's urban rail network has been led by private sector. So, this enabled by a transit oriented development or TOD. Specifically, railroad companies create their own demand for railroads connecting urban and suburban、uh, areas by developing residential lands in the, in the suburbs and also office buildings and also commercial facilities near stations in urban centers. In addition, the business model creates A virtuous cycle in which profits from reals are used to invest in real estate, retail, and also other businesses to generate profits, so that will be invested back to the rail system as well. So, the Japanese style TOD has led to the development of urban railways in Japan throughout,、um, through a private capital. Rail is environmentally friendly and also economically beneficial, and it is a critical social infrastructure that supports people's lives. However, Japan's railways are facing big challenges. First one is the de decline of ridership, especially in rural areas. Second is addressing、uh, decarbonization. With population decline, I'd like to talk about this one first. 
convenient road transportation and other factors, ridership is declining, especially in rural areas, and also that has led to increasing difficulties for some operators in maintaining uh, their services. And then passengers transported per kilometer per day is called transportation density. Uh, when it declines to lower than 2,000 people, a private operator might not be able to maintain their route uh, with their own capital and also funds. The low transportation density, fewer than 2,000 people, was 16% in 1987, but uh, it's now more than doubled in 2020 to 39%. With this background, some cities are combining restructuring of transportation and city planning together. This is an example of Toyama City. Toyama City is located approximately 340 kilometers northwest of Tokyo uh, with a population of about 400,000 people. Toyama City has arranged residential areas, administrative offices, and cultural facilities around to Toyama Station and uh, built a large bus terminal in front of the station. In addition, a tram train loops from the square in front of the station to enhance the circulation of the entire town. The town's transportation-oriented development has led to revitalization and the maintenance of the rail service. In addition, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, decarbonization as a second challenge. Uh, rail is uh, fundamentally environmentally uh, friendly. Uh, however, Japan has an ambitious goal to become carbon neutral by 2050. Our ministry, in collaboration with rail operators, identified these three policies. So the first pillar is decarbonization of railway business here. Uh, so you can see this. Uh, fuel cell rail cars that has been in demonstration uh, since March 2022, which is developed by JR East. The second pillar is decarbonization through railway assets. For example, solar power generation and consumption on station properties and then also hydrogen trans uh, transport by rail are being considered. The third pillar is decarbonization by promoting the use of railways. Operators are promoting behavioral change by visualizing reduction in CO2 emissions by the use of rail. These directions or pillars will collectively enable Japan to become uh, carbon neutral by 2050 and also the real sector to achieve carbon reduction to 46 uh, percent by the 2030s. So I'd like to summarize my presentation. Uh, railways continue to play a significant role in achieving a sustainable society. However, some railway lines, especially in rural areas, have become difficult to maintain due to population declines and also uh, other factors. Against this background, it is important to enhance the uh, environment to make better use of the uh, characteristics of railways, with railways as an integral part of urban development. Uh, we need to further reduce environmental impacts and also enhance disaster response so that uh, railway facilities will con uh, continue to contribute to achieving a sustainable society. So the Japanese government is committed to work with railway operators to spearhead these policies. This was a quick uh, overview of our uh, ambitious goals and also initiatives. So thank you very much uh, for listening. And then also, I'm looking forward to a meaningful panel discussions as well. Thank you very much.